This is a demonstration of Sargent and Greenleaf's model number four. The single movement version which was specifically designed to be used in the Corliss Safe Company's spherical safes. Now Sargent and Greenleaf had developed two different model types of their number four. Their number four designation was for this size of case. There was a single movement which was this here for the Corliss and then there was a design that had two movements in it for other safe companies. This particular model was always sold in pairs so there was a left hand pair and a right or a left hand single movement and a right hand single movement which was placed on either side of the sphere that was uh, in the uh, design of the Corliss safe. This particular uh, setup here dates from about 1901 to 1902 and contains the portion of the Corliss safe which has obviously the time lock the uh, bolt work here as well as one of two uh, combination locks that would have been on the safe. This particular setup was on one of the smaller of the styles of Corliss safe which had the bolt mechanism uh, withdrawn and deployed via the lock itself rather than a separate uh, crank for moving the bolt work which would have been the case on their larger models. We now have an overall view of the mechanism and over to the right is just a part of the linkage that would have gone to the opposite side of the safe for linking both of these two units together. This one which is the uh, left hand movement and the other which is the right hand movement. Now just to give a quick overview of how this worked right now the combination lock is in the open position. In other words all of the tumblers are aligned and the fence here is allowed to be completely uh, uh, de uh, deployed within the four tumbler lock. This allows the bolt work to be moved completely out and thus in. And the bolt work itself would have been deployed via the lock as you can see as I move the spindle of the combination lock this makes the uh, bolt work move all the way out and in at the completion of the correct combination. So to demonstrate this I'm going to move the combination lock to where it would be all the way in the position where it would be ready to be locked. That means the bolt here is fully withdrawn and the time lock can now be set. So I will now wind the time lock a little bit And then the operator, in order to set the time lock, would pull this upward. And now the bolt is locked into, the bolt here is locked into position, the drop bolt. And this bolt work here can no longer be pushed inward to open the safe. And to demonstrate that, even though the, the, uh, lock up here is still in the open position 
you can no longer move this bolt work in. It is now blocked. So what is being demonstrated right now is, say, if the operator wanted to open the safe uh, during the time that the time lock was on guard, he would have this in the position where all the tumblers were correct, but he still would not be able to move the spindle to unlock this, uh, this uh, 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 safe. Now to demonstrate the safe being able to be opened once the time lock is off guard, we will simply uh, move this aside pretending that the uh, time lock has gone to zero which would allow this piece here to this snubber bar here to be moved over to the right thus allowing the drop bolt to fall via gravity and then the operator would be able to simply move the bolt work inward via the combination lock and open the safe. So once again to demonstrate right now the lock is on the on guard position the drop bolt is raised and locked by the snubber bar the bolt work is retracted and the combination lock is if you move it just a little bit like this now the fence is pushed upward and we're pretending like all of the um, tumblers are jumbled and this would be the position that the fence would be in raised uh, to prevent the lock from being able to be opened so now <clears throat> We have dialed in the correct combination and now the fence drops and we see that, oh, we cannot move it because this time lock is on guard. Now pretending that the time lock has gone to zero, the bolt will drop and we can now have the correct combination dialed in and move the bolt work to open the safe. Now I will show some of the other part of this mechanism and as you can see it's in the original state. There's quite a bit of of marring and some rust and so forth. I have not uh, um, restored this unit yet and on the back side here you can actually see part of the curvature of that uh, safe the spherical safe door and you can see from the curve that it was a fairly small safe maybe oh about uh, two maybe two feet in diameter or so which is why it had a manual uh, uh, why it had a bolt release that was controlled by the uh, lock itself. Now over here is the linkage that uh, would connect this bolt work to the bolt work on the opposite side of the sphere so that it would operate as uh, uh, a pair in unison. And here is a close-up of the four tumbler mechanism here, uh, which is also a Sargent and Greenleaf. <clears throat> and right now this is in, uh, <clears throat> all the tumblers are, are actually uh, aligned. So what I'm going to do is push this over so that it it's, goes into the locked position. And I'm going to just slightly move it just enough to raise the fence and move one of the tumblers ever so slightly just enough just this 
And now you will see one of the clever designs that Sargent and Greenleaf employed in their combination locks to prevent somebody from trying to feel where the, uh, try to force this fence to feel where the tumblers were in order to try to pick the lock. And what you have here is the fence is raised and this fence can now not come down touching any of the of the tumblers uh, face of the tumblers is now raised actually above the face of the tumbler because it is touching this entire uh, circumference here so there's no way for somebody to try and feel uh, where the opening of the tumbler is which in this case is right here you can see this little square and I can actually put the the uh, pointer into it so that they can try and pick this lock because it is completely above the uh, top of the tumbler the only point at which one could possibly do any kind of feeling is this one small area here and that would be impossible to do if you're trying to align all four tumblers that are in a random position. And so now assuming that we have uh, properly dialed in the first three uh, numbers for our four tumbler lock, we're now approaching the last number and we see this gap here in the uh, tumbler for the fence to fall into and that gets moved like so and then back for the fence to fall into all four of the gates which is what these uh, gaps here are called in the tumblers this is the fence and these are the gates and the fence drops into the gates and now you move the dial and your safe can be opened that is, of course, assuming that the time lock is off guard. This artifact gives one a very nice uh, overview of how a time lock interacts with the bolt work and how the bolt work was deployed and retracted via the combination lock itself on smaller safes where that function was not done via a separate lever in the door. So now you see the demonstration where both the time lock must be off guard and the correct combination dialed in for one to be able to open the safe. Either one, not being in agreement, will not allow the bolt work to move. And of course this linkage here was critical because it supplied the uh, verification between the two locks that they were either open and uh, or closed in other words everything that was needed on this side 
which was the uh, left hand side for the safe to open to have both this combination lock uh, properly uh, dialed in as well as the time lock was also needed on the second set of mechanisms which were identical to this which was the right hand side of the safe and this link is what supplied the information between the two modules to make sure that they were both in agreement to allow the safe to be opened.